Hi there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. We will explore an important algorithm today which is the depth first search. It's almost imperative to fully understand this algorithm as it can be applied to solve many questions related to graphs or trees. In this video, we will explore how we can run a depth first search on a graph. You can use the same algorithm to traverse all nodes of a tree. However, there is a, there is a slight difference in how you do that. There are two very popular algorithms to navigate all nodes or search for something in a graph. One is the depth first search and the second one is the breadth first search. Let's try to understand the general idea behind a depth first search. Let's build a directed graph when node A has three neighbors, B, C and D. Each one of those three neighbors is connected to one node, E, F and G and they're all connected to H. You can start the traversal from any arbitrary node. Let's start with node A. We can navigate to any one of the neighboring nodes. So let's pick node D and traverse to it. Node D is connected to node G and we traverse to that. And then finally, we navigate to node H. The algorithm then backtracks to the source node A selects one of its neighbors that has yet to be discovered or explored and then traverses to that node. It processes that node and goes down to its neighboring node till it reaches the end. It backtracks once again and traverses to the last neighboring node B and exactly it navigates till it reaches the last node H. You can see that all the nodes have been explored. So that's a higher level view of how we can traverse a graph using depth first search. Let's check out the breadth first search algorithm and review what the traversal looks like at a higher level. Here also you can start from any arbitrary node. Let's start from node A. So the first thing we do is explore all its neighbors. After that, the traversal moves on to the next level or layer of neighbors till it reaches the end. The traversal in the case of breadth for search is layer by layer or you could also say level by level. On the other hand, a depth for search explores as deeply as possible along each path before backtracking to explore other paths. Depth for search is mostly implemented using recursion whereas a breadth for search is implemented using a queue data structure. The obvious question here is when do we use a breadth first? versus a depth first search. Breadth first search is often used to find the shortest path. That's because breadth first search is guaranteed to find the shortest path in an unweighted graph. After all, as you just saw in the animation, it explores all nodes at a given distance before, before moving to nodes at a greater distance. Depth first search is used in tasks like topological sorting, cycle detection, uh, finding the disconnected components, and solving puzzles such as mazes. One good example of depth for search is the problem of number of islands, and I have linked the video in the description. Please also make sure to check out my video in the algorithms playlist where I have explored the breadth for search algorithm in greater detail. So here is another graph and we will examine the progress of depth first search algorithm on it. Our goal here is to run DFS on all nodes. And notice that all the nodes in the graph are not connected, but it still constitutes a graph. You can use the same algorithm to search for something in a graph, but the search returns as soon as we find the matching node. And uh, whereas when we are exploring, we run the DFS on all the nodes. The gray color over here indicates that this node has not been discovered during the traversal. Once the node is discovered, the color changes to orange. Now, what does a node being discovered mean? It means that we have reached a particular node in our navigation process, but we haven't explored all the possible paths originating from that node. Once we have examined all paths originating from that node, we say that the node has been explored and the color changes to green. What I'm showing here is a directed graph, but the same algorithm applies to an undirected graph as well. 
An important thing to remember here is that we navigate to a node only if its color is gray or is undiscovered. If it is discovered or has been explored already, we skip it. We'll start with node A. Node A is now discovered, so we'll change the color to orange. It has two neighbors B and C. We could navigate to either one of them, so let's uh, pick node B. From node B, we could go to either node D or E. So we'll select node D. And then from node, node D, we will traverse to node C. Now from node C, we can traverse to node B. But node B is already discovered, so we do not navigate to it. I'm going to change the arrow to a dotted line to indicate that we are skipping it. There is nowhere else to travel to from node C, so we start backtracking. The color of node C changes to green to indicate that this node has been explored. We backtrack to D and, and then to B. From B, we can navigate to E and there is nowhere else to go from E. So we start backtracking to B. There is no other path to explore from B, so we backtrack all the way to A. Node A has another neighbor, which is C, but it has already been explored, so, so we skip it. And now we can mark node A as explored. Now let's run DFS on the next node B. We cannot run it because it has already been explored. The same thing for nodes C, D, and E. We cannot run DFS on them since they have also been explored. Our next unexplored node is F. Its only neighbor E has been explored, so we do not navigate to it and mark node F as explored. Now the next unexplored node is G. G has one neighbor H and we navigate to it. We have reached a dead end, so we mark H as explored, backtrack to node G and mark G as explored. So with that, we have reached the end of the depth first search traversal algorithm. Let's examine a sample code for this traversal. Before we examine the sample code, can I please request that you give this video a thumbs up if you like this video and also subscribe to my channel. My genuine attempt in making videos like these is to help you understand some core algorithms. Often these concepts need a refresher especially if you have been in, this, in the industry for a while like myself and are preparing for an interview. If there are any topics you would like me to cover or if you have any feedback, please leave a comment in the comments section. Thank you. So this graph here can be represented as an adjacency list where each node is a key and its value is a list of neighbors. If you'd like a refresher on the graph data structure and its various representations, please be sure to check out my video on it, which I have linked to in the description. Let's go over the sample code. I have declared a set called explored to keep track of the nodes we have either discovered or explored. It will prevent us from navigating to the same node multiple times and will avoid the formation of a cycle. So this is no different than coloring the nodes orange or green. That was done for pictorial representation and understanding of where we are in the traversal process. So the function DFS accepts a graph as an argument. That is an adjacency list. For each node in the graph, we'll run a DFS visit on it only if it's not already been added to the explored set. The first thing we do in the DFS visit function is to add the node to the set. And then for each neighbor of that node in the graph, we run DFS visit on it recursively only if it does not exist in the explored set. Finally, we print the explored set and the output contains all the nodes that we have explored in the graph. I have included a GitHub link to this code in the description Please do try it out to solidify your understanding further. So let's uh, go over the time and space complexity. Let's say V represents the number of vertices and E represents the number of edges in the graph. The time complexity of DFS is O of V plus E because we are pretty much traversing through all the nodes and edges. And, and since we are recursively running DFS on each vertex, 
the space occupied by the function call stack will be O of V, where V represents the number of vertices in the graph. So that's it for this video. Please do check out the video on topological sort in the playlist as that's a great use of the depth for search algorithm. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you and goodbye.